Welcome everyone, this is International Master William Pascal for video chess training here on YouTube. And today I've started a new concept where I'm going to be going over a review of games from a particular opening that I've played in my live stream during the week on Lee Chess. The following theme is the Rosalimo variation of the Sicilian. And the first game we're going to take a look at in this Rosalimo as black, that's the theme here is um, a 7-3 game. I played against one of the viewers on my live stream. This is uh, against King Chaser. Played e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, and now bishop b5. Bishop b5 is a very strategic kind of variation. There are some lines that can get quite tactical, but I think the fundamental intention of this move is to develop and play usually a kind of closed game rather than an open game with 3d4, the so-called open Sicilian. Bishop to b5 is probably the highly, the most highly regarded of the moves other than d4, although I think to be fair, the c3 Sicilian deserves to be included in the top non-mainline variations. So today's theme, the Rosalimo, taking a look at some games we went over Rather, we played here on the stream recently. So on the fly here, bishop b5, d6. This is my main variation that I play. Um, I think the most popular is probably g6 for black in this position. And also very popular is e6. And you can see um, side variations like queen b6. I was thinking queen c7 is... Um, is an interesting line that's not all that bad for black. White has a development edge, but queen c7, one way to try to avoid the doubled pawns. The question is black's a little bit far behind in development. So not really a reliable line, but interesting. So we play d6, and now if we look at the opening encyclopedia here, there are a number of moves. Um, I mean, d4 transposes to, this transposes to the Moscow variation. Um, the uh, complications after c takes d, queen takes d4, that's a whole variation of itself. Not really the Rosalima per se. Um, so we're not really looking at that. We're looking at other moves. Castles is the most common. And c3 is a move that was played by, I believe, I was believe, played by Kasparov himself. Um, c3 is an interesting move. And in that event, Black has to be careful not to play bishop d7 and let white have a big center, but to play knight f6 first. Something to keep in mind. c3 is a very dangerous line, and I think that's one of white's very best. For some reason, never really caught on in terms of popularity. But king chaser played bishop takes c6, and this is a variation I have a lot of experience with. We must take back. And now he kind of tricked me, per se. It was a fast game, 7-3. And I wasn't paying overtly that much attention to the move order while I was uh, commentating on my live stream. So instead of like traditional move here, castles, you see according to the opening, Explorer is like by far the main move. Um, the other moves are kind of rare. E5, H3, but for some reason that I don't quite fully understand, C3 is almost never played here. And that's what my opponent played c3. He sort of tricked me. In fact, according to the opening explorer, this move is never played. There may be some technical problem with bishop a6. This, I thought, well, it's kind of committal, you know, to play bishop a6. If later he plays d3 and c4, um, I may end up regretting moving the bishop at all to a6. So I'm not really sure this you'd have to do some research on it looks a little bit artificial and i was reluctant to do that in a fast game but there is some justification he has kind of weakened the dark squares in his position so i think bishop a6 is is viable whereas if he hadn't played c3 it would be out of the question um, but surprising here that c3 has never been played in any of these games that doesn't mean it's never been played in a bigger database you'll probably find a couple of of games but the thing about the move, I mean, I hardly find it bad, and it actually tricked me into uh, misplaying the variation I wanted to play. So I should play knight f6 here. 
this is putting pressure on e4. Obviously, white's sore point in the position. And um, if he has to play d3, then his whole plan of playing c3 and d4 is, is sort of lost. So this is the best way to try to take advantage. And if e5, I think the black has a good game. Again, because the white squares are very, very weak. d takes e, knight takes e5, queen d5. And had white not played c3, this probably wouldn't be so bad. But because of threats of something like bishop f5 and bishop d3, and the hit on the g-pawn on g2, the whole position kind of falls apart for white. So he doesn't have that option. After knight f6, he has some kind of sad alternatives between like queen e2, queen c2, d3, something to defend the pawn on e4. Because in the event of something like castles, knight takes e4, he could win his pawn back with queen a4, but I don't really like white's game here. I guess queen a4, knight moves back, and then um, when he tries to take this pawn on c6, I've got a really, really powerful bishop pair in this kind of position. So much so that uh, the computer engine thinks I'm merely like a pawn up in this position. This white square bishop is so powerful with white having weaknesses, again, on the white squares. So not a good variation for white. Anyway, taking a look at the game, he tricked me with a move order. I missed my chance to exploit it. And then we go to the game continuation. Um, I played e5 which is what I would normally play after castles. But now, by playing e5, I give him this, this d4 here. And this position is um, good for white, I think. Slightly better for white. I noticed the computer engine was thinking about playing f5, but that looks exceedingly risky. I think I have nothing better than to transpose to, uh, to another variation that I've played before. Something similar, anyway. Um, c takes d4, c takes d4, and I cannot really maintain this pawn on e5. We have a backwardness along the c file, backwardness along the d file. The computer found bishop a6, which is interesting. Maybe that's the best to uh, try to get some dynamic counterplay and pin his king down in the center. Very, very complicated position after that. In the blitz game, I didn't really have time to calculate it, so I went into a position I was familiar with, but this leaves white with a sort of lasting small advantage. I was surprised he took with the queen here, but there's nothing wrong with that move. Um, I think it's kind of a coin flip between knight takes d4 and queen takes d4. They're both a little bit different, and um, not necessarily like one is better than the other, I think. Knight takes makes sense to put pressure on the c6 pawn, force me to play a passive move like bishop d7. So I would expect knight takes d4, but he played queen takes d4, and the position has the flavor of like a Moscow variation. And I think that white has a slight edge. Knight f6, and then castles. We've actually transposed to a couple of games where no, bat, no doubt, um, you know, white castled first and played c3 later. But anyway, we get to the same position here. A um, couple of decent players playing my position, Brodsky and Baramidze. Bishop e7, there's nothing better than that. And now, King Chaser could just improve his position. I mean, I think Knight c3 will probably transpose to uh, more games. There's also Rook d1. Um, moves like h3, b3, look like kind of typical. White has a pleasant setup. It's hard for black to do anything. This bishop on c8 is the real problem with this position and many positions, especially in the Rosalimo, what to do with the bishop on c8. I have the bishop pair, but no real work for that bishop on c8, as usual. e5. Following this game, Willemze and Baramidze, um, one might argue that this is kind of like white, like blowing his advantage. The computer immediately thinks I'm okay. Perhaps he is trading his strong point in the center too early, but he does have a structural advantage. I don't think this is a concrete mistake. You know, it's just like a transferal 
of one advantage for another. He has the central um, pawn on e4, giving him a space advantage. Now he's changing that in for like a permanent isolated pawn he can play against. So I don't think this is a bad move, just a matter of taste. You know, a lot of players might prefer knight c3. But in that kind of position, maybe he's better off with the queen back on d1 and, and like knight on d4. So this is an attempt to, to just justify um, queen takes d4. And we are following a game here. The bower meets a game with black. d takes e, queen takes d8. And actually, I don't want to lose my right to castle. Bishop takes d8, knight takes e5, 2003. And Baramita played the move I played. Over the board, I was hesitant about this. And um, my other th idea was to play c5. But in retrospect, I mean, that pawn looks just as weak on c5 as it is on b7. Uh, tough call. The computer engine agrees that c5 is an alternative. Bishop b7 is the better, apparently. Um, this is my game. And now, I would have expected routine development from white with something like knight c3, possibly rook e1, possibly maybe b3 with the idea of fixing the c-pawn, um, playing bishop b2 or bishop a3. But for some reason, I was a little surprised when he played rook d1, which obviously this is not a bad move, but something about this move did take me by surprise. I guess I expected rook e1 and maybe the other rook coming over here, but it makes sense. I mean, one rook goes to the d file, one rook goes to the c file. That looks perfectly okay for white. Castles, not to lose any more time in terms of development. Um, white plays knight c3, naturally the best square for the knight, and I think I played perfectly. Rook e8, but it is an unpleasant position. Gaining time, knight c4, I don't know if he has an alternative to knight c4. It looks like he does. I mean, he has a couple. Bishop f4. This move I rejected over the board because of knight h5. When I saw this, I thought, well, this this just like wrecks white's position or something. It may not be that bad. Knight d3 deserves consideration, looking for the c5 outpost. That is an alternative. But knight c4 is certainly good. And then... Um, now I had a little bit of a difficult time deciding what to do, but I realized how strong this threat is of, of knight d6, so I kind of have to meet that, and we do have the back rank mate on e1, so he can't play knight d6. Bishop e3, again, he could play something like b3 and put the bishop on a different diagonal. It also guards the b-pawn long term. The only disadvantage of a uh, bishop e3, I guess, is that he's giving me knight d5 with tempo, but he ends up with a really good square for his bishop on d4. So I thought white played this fine. Um, perhaps he dwindled his advantage, but it wasn't easy. His advantage wasn't that big in the first place. So good, good game. Um, knight to d5, bishop d4, excellent move. Here I was a little bit stuck. I didn't see any sort of tactics was looking for knight f4. In fact, I was looking at sacrificing a pawn here with c5, bishop takes c5, knight f4, but it didn't really look 100% clear. So, computer recommending knight f4. I played just knight takes c3. It does seem weird to trade my powerful knight off, but he's got threats of nasty stuff like knight a4, knight c5. That looks really unpleasant. So I decided to trade pieces here the engine agrees, and white is equal or a tiny bit a hair better, and bishop a6. Activating my bad piece, and um, I decided I was willing to play like an ops color bishop position here to hold a draw, and that's what happened. So, knight d6, this is a good move. I think I have to take, um, rook e6 was interesting. I take it back. I should have said rook e6 is interesting in this position. I was a little bit concerned about knight f5, though, and I thought that white still still stands a bit better. So I decided to take, and um, I thought I should hold this rooks and opposite color bishop endgame, but it's a little bit unpleasant. Rook takes d6, rook c8, and you see my rooks are bottled up. 
My plan was to transfer my bishop, so he should have played b3 here, but misses his chance, plays rook d1, allowing bishop c4, and now I'm able to put my bishop on d5, which gives me a pretty solid defensive setup and ability to probably hold on. a3, bishop d5, and now I believe the position is a draw. And later on, rook e1, rook e8, we traded rooks. He got a little bit of pressure here with, I think, rook d7. And I played a6. White is a tiny bit better still. But I think it's not enough. Excellent game by king chaser, rook b7. That's also the best move. Um, I'm just barely holding on here. But um, in the end, we reached a drawn position, and he lost on time because he just sort of gave up. He wanted to win, he declined to draw, and I think um, became frustrated at the end. So it was an unrated game. He let me he let me win on time. That's what happened at the end. C5, this, this is a draw. White's still a hair better, but uh, I've improved my position vastly. As long as my bishop doesn't get trapped, we had uh, enough to, to draw the game. Okay, let's go back to the um, to my list of games and find another one. I thought this was a very instructive Rosalimo. Going back, we have um, much more to show you here. Okay, so the next one against a lower rated player was also interesting. Um, this particular opponent doesn't normally play a lot of theory, but this day he decided he was going to play the Rosalimo. Ghost Mind, it's a 1600, played a lot on my stream. Normally plays strange openings, but today he came out with the Rosalimo, e4, c5, and we're here again with knight c6, bishop b5. Um, I've mentioned all the main lines, g6, um, e6, I've played d6 as I did again here, also queen c7. Um, I should mention knight f6, which I didn't mention. That's another line, and um, you can even play bizarre moves like knight a5. So... The choice is yours. Lots of options. No easy answers, though. Okay, so we played d6. Now, Ghostmine played e5, and the um, the Stockfish kind of uh, gives little analysis. Here, it, it jumps to conclusions um, with its notes. It says the e5 dubious. I mean, I wouldn't really call e5 dubious. It's actually a tricky move where black can go wrong um, quite easily if he makes one misstep. And um, we can see here, Baklan played it with white. He's only 2650. Um, lots of reasonable players. The wild Johnny Hector. Um, I mentioned earlier during my stream, I, I've seen Igor's Rousas play this for white unsuccessfully, albeit. Um, and I've faced it a lot in Blitz, and I did lose a lot of games initially um, in this particular line. So it's worth taking a look at. Now it turns out that bishop d7 is um, the recommended move here for black. It looks like bishop d7. That was not my analysis though. After bishop d7, e takes d6, e6 makes sense. I guess you could take back on e6, but it, on d6, but it looks better for white this position slightly slightly better for white probably nothing major but um i would not prefer it this this move keeps the black pawn structure a little more wholesome i'm sure i probably played this at one point it looks a lot like a c3 sicilian it's very very equal ish um again after something like d4 there is a game here zoran illich who's something of a theoretician he he plays the queen b6 sicilian um, this looks relatively equal, but to call e5 a bad move, I mean, I think Stockfish needs to have its computer chips examined. It's it's a risky move. Maybe it gives away white's advantage, but it's tricky, and, and black has to be careful. So I followed this line, d takes e, which I think was my analysis um, from some years ago. But uh, for some reason, there's not too many games here in the database. There must be more. So we have now knight takes e5, queen d5, bishop takes c6, check, 
B takes C. And here we are, we've transposed to 14 games. The move order must have been slightly different. But maybe the uh, Rouse's game is in here amongst these 14 that I was, I was thinking of. So the G2 pawn is hanging. He must retreat. I mean, Queen E2 just isn't sound. You, you cannot just sacrifice the G2 pawn. I don't believe you can do that. <laughs> um, so Knight F3. And then we've got Predojevic versus Malakov, Baklan Halkius, Rouses Dreyev. That was not the game I was... Th maybe that was the game I was thinking of. But I did see Rouses in the French team championship play it once against LaRue. Maybe lose that game as well. Um, but the engine's changing its mind about this position, you know. So maybe in the long run, the pawn structure is more important. And Bishop D7 on move 4 is uh, is good. Here in this position, I was thinking about uh, Queen E6 check. And that has not been played. Although Queen E6 check, Queen E2, that ending should be playable. Um, apparently, Queen E4 check has been played quite a bit. Queen E4 check, and now King F1. The Queen is misplaced, and White's going to lose some time here. I mean, Black's going to lose some time with the, with the Queen misplaced. So you could play Queen E2, but King F1 seems like the idea. Take advantage of the Queen and a number of games there. So perhaps, just perhaps, um, this is not a bad not a bad try for White. Um, but bishop g4, I believe, was my analysis. So I followed my original analysis. We're following some decent players. Malkov, Halkias, Timoshenko. But it looks like white might be a bit better. Knight c3. And here I had to calculate quite a bit. Because in this position, my original plan was to play queen e6 check. But I had second thoughts about that. After queen e6 check, queen e2. And it looks like maybe white remains slightly better. Queen e6 check, queen e2. I cannot take on f3 and let him completely shred my pawn structure with queen takes e6. So I'd have to trade queens on e2. And I would think in this kind of position, white has the advantage with this uh, really, really weak um, double isolated pawns. Perhaps life is not over for black, but it looks like easier to play for white. So here I calculated, calculated for a while because I couldn't remember, and then I finally played bishop takes f3. But what we have to do um, is to calculate knight takes d5. This takes a little bit of thought. It's not that clear. Bishop takes d1, knight c7 check, king somewhere. I'm not sure it really matters, d8 or d7. And then um, knight takes rook. And I was a little bit worried about d4 in this position happening after bishop takes c2, or d3, or d4, whatever. Um, I'm worried about bishop f4 and rescuing the knight via c7. So that's the question. This has never been played before to my knowledge. What about this, like d3? I thought I could sack the exchange, um, for example, here. Let's see, bishop takes d3, and uh, the black position is is a little sketchy. What about also king here? He's going to get his knight out or not? That's the key question. Will the knight be saved? Probably not. I was thinking bishop f4, and then perhaps f6 or something like that. Engine's analyzing e5, which I don't really understand. Uh, I would think f6. And then perhaps he has some crazy line with with knight here, knight here. Um, the computer says just bishop takes d3. This looks a little scary for black, actually. Um, we are up a piece, though. So, rather, two pieces for a rook. Um, once we trap this knight, it's pretty messy. And I think it deserves further analysis. Um, but apparently a lot of strong players have trusted this. I'm still not 100% sure what's going on there. It was more complicated than I thought, but bishop takes f3, queen takes f3 would be normal. And 
So Ghost Mine goes his own way with G takes F3. It's not that bad, but obviously safer to play Queen takes F3. Queen takes F3, this has been played a number of games, mostly draws. G takes F. It looks like the pawns, the weaknesses sort of compensate each other. I would argue, though, that his pawns um, are a little closer to home on F2 and F3. So that being said, like my C pawn up on C5 is a little harder for me to keep protected. Maybe white is still slightly better here. Bit of a problem. Another argument for playing bishop d7 on move 4. So he took with the pawn, though, and it's a little bit different. Now I have a check. I guess it's not the only move. In fact, I have two checks. But I played queen d7. This was a practical decision on my part because my opponent was much, much lower rated. Um, if it was a strong player, I might consider checking and trading queens. But objectively, this might just be the best move. Queen d7 and then knight e4. Perhaps a little bit early for knight e4. He should just develop with like d3. But I didn't think knight e4 is concretely bad. Though it is a target to the advance f5. So maybe this was played prematurely. Um, e6. When I want to put my pawns on white squares primarily with a dark squared bishop. d3. And now he's threatening to build up on this pawn on c5. So f5. I thought this was a well-played game by both sides up until this point. Knight should go back to d2 to blockade the c4 square. He does not do that. He goes to c3. So this moves slightly, slightly better. Knight to c3. And now knight f6. I have good control of the center. If you look at all my pawns in the vicinity of the center, black has very good control. f4. Another pawn on a dark square. Is this really the right idea for white? Probably not. Blocking the bishop. So he could play bishop f4, for example. Making that piece a relevant piece, controlling the center. And I think that white's still okay. f4 makes the position a little bit worse. I play knight d5. And I commentated during the game that this is a monster knight. You know, an absolute monster knight. Um, maybe his best move is to actually, it's possible that taking it, but he really doesn't want to fix my pawn structure. So he played knight e2. This was very backward. This was the first grossly um, serious mistake by white. So bishop d2, something developing, knight e2, and white starts to go wrong now. Bishop e7, I'm aiming for the long diagonal. I knew he wanted to oust my knight with c4. It was a good plan. But he needs to prepare it with something like bishop d2 or maybe a3. And he played a terrible move here, c4 right away. And the d3 pawn is weak, so white is basically like losing material here after knight to b4. And the game goes downhill. He, he blunders tactically. d4, pawn takes pawn. Perhaps he has a saving grace here with uh, a3. And he missed it. This is still not that bad for white. Maybe d4 was a brilliant move. In fact, look, looking like kind of the only move in this position. He could castle and just sacrifice the pawn straight away. But d4, that is not bad. You know, after pawn takes pawn, he could play a3, force my knight back to a6, and then recapture on d4 with only a slight disadvantage. In the actual game, we have queen takes d4, knight c2 check, game over. Going back now to our third Rasalima for the day. Um, not for the day, but for the week, shall I say. Uh, we'll take a look. So, all right. The next Rasalima we had, see if there's Ghost Mind, the next game. Every time I do a stream like this, I'm going to focus on one particular opening and choose some of the games that I've played on the stream. 
So I knew there was some more here. Let me see. It's been a while. This was a game not on my stream, it was during a tournament, but the opening is worth taking a look at. I um I lost to a very, very strong sixteen hundred here. But that's another story in itself. Anyway, we're not really concerned about the result here, but we're analyzing um we're analyzing the the point of the opening. E4, C5, Knight of 3, Knight C6, Bishop B5. And I made uh, some mistakes in this game, so I wanted to take a look here. Again, D6, and now White played D4. I mentioned this possibility. This is not really a Rosalimo um, proper. This is actually um, a Moscow variation. So C takes D4, and both recaptures are possible. The proper Moscow variation, queen takes d4, has a ton of theory. Um, after bishop d7, bishop takes c6, bishop takes c6, and white can play c4 or knight c3. There's two completely different systems, and it's another story. And that, that variation really has to be kind of treated like as a system all of its own. Um, if you do play d6 on move two, you're more likely to encounter it um, overall. So you'll see d4, pawn takes pawn, queen takes d4 after d6 on move two. Bishop b5, and now d6, and here my opponent played d4, c takes d4, and then knight takes d4. So this is how we kind of like keep this in the realm of the Rosalimo, so to speak. I do see this quite a bit. Um, it is a variation. If we look at the score, it's sort of like, wow, black has 46% wins to white 17%. And um, that's statistically relevant, although only 48 games. I think actually mostly because this variation isn't really established for white. And um, I would think that most most of the games are like weaker players playing stronger players. The stronger players playing black more often than white. But we see decent players. Megaranto, Munoz Pantoja, Nataf. So decent guys. Um, Bishop d7 is forced. Now my opponent here voluntarily exchanges on c6. It's the right way to exchange. I have had people play knight take c6, which kind of loses a tempo, but it's not necessary to trade right away. Maybe best to castle, but he plays bishop takes c6, b takes c6, and now c4. c4 makes a lot of sense. It's like a Marazzi. I have, again, this questionable bishop on, on the white squares. That's very hard for black to do anything. So I like, I like c4, definitely. Um, but knight c3, it's also not bad. And uh, knight f6. And now my opponent castled, I think. No, bishop g5, okay. So the position almost looks like a, a kind of Richter Rouser. The situation is complicated because e5 is a move that I don't really want to play. This is a suggestion of the computer, but... First of all, there's a problem with knight f5. Secondly, there's a kind of backwardness along the d-file. So I was kind of stuck here and uh, not sure what to do, what I felt comfortable with. So I opted for e6. And now we transpose back into a line you see here, Yudasin versus uh, Shirov, or Yudazin. Um, this is uh, back into Rouser theory with the move e6. Yudazin did play this this rouser attack. This is a rouser attack with bishop g5 and bishop b5 for a time. So I transpose back into that. It's possible that something like e5 is playable, but I didn't really like it. Okay, so now we have queen f3. My opponent, who's 1600, seems to know uh, theory pretty well here. But again, that's another story. Queen f3 and... Um, there's a problem with the c6 pawn. White's threatening e5 type ideas here. 
So once again, e5 is played. I don't really like that structure, and I've had bad experiences. Maybe it's the best move. There are a bunch of games here. h6, queen b6. Um, the aforementioned game with Udasin and Shirok might have been queen b6. I'm not 100% sure. That's an interesting line. But I played rook c8. So maybe we should take a look at this queen b6. It's been a long time since I played this. It is the Udas and Shirov game. Um, Black seems to have a decent score. I don't have. Uh, I haven't had a lot of fun against Udasin. Although I did draw with him in a very epic last round game of the World Open, where one of us could have won first place, but we drew and won very little instead. Um, it was a Rosalimo, ironically, but he played a different line with our first game from the, the analysis here, bishop takes c6. So, castles queen side and b3, this is a sharp position, and uh, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, g takes f6, and you can see if you take here, things can get kind of complicated on the queen side with queen takes b2. So white has to retreat the knight, and it's two knights versus two bishops in a typical Richter Rouser kind of pawn structure things are very very messy and double-edged and I think both sides have have good chances to play for a win um, instead so instead I played rook c8 not remembering the theory here apparently this move is okay but the problem with the move and I'm not happy about it is that that rook doesn't really belong on the c-file what we really want to do is to use this rook actively along the half open b-file so I think philosophically speaking this rook isn't really in the right place now my opponent played castles king side we can see here castles queen side is all theory um that's the main line so westerine and castles king side perfectly okay for white bishop e7 we transpose into a a game from 2002 and then white played knight b3 this was a perfectly okay positional move i mean White is basically going to centralize the pieces, and um, computer engines like to play without pawn moves. So this kind of move is something I think a computer might like. This particular stockfish I'm looking at here, yeah, it's coming up with knight b3. After a while, it wasn't its first move, but it is, yeah. Yeah, it is coming up with knight b3. So I'm possibly playing against the computer here. Um, castles, rook a d1, and very nasty pressure. Still, I'm okay. Just okay. And then I started to get passive here. I had I had little time, and um, I was scared of e5 being a break and creating tactics along the d-file. But um, rather than trade pieces, I had to try to find something else. There isn't really a good move, though, for black in this position. That's the funny thing about it. I mean, I didn't want to play queen c7 and leave my bishop unprotected. And I wanted to get my queen um, off the, the position of being on the d-file, where I'm kind of tied down and vulnerable to being hit by tactics. So queen c7, perhaps, something like that. I was afraid of sacrificial ideas that I've... I've definitely seen stuff like this before. Um, playing people using computer engines on the, on the, on the, on the internet... Um, this kind of sacrifice looks looks pretty stock to me. So I was afraid of that kind of stuff. So I decided to simplify. It's a bit passive. And then still I'm pretty solid here. But rookie one and then f6. I was terrified of e5. f6 is, uh, is quite weakening though. Quite weakening. Now maybe e5 would be the best. At least putting my pawn on the right color. I can... I can deal with this. I have a weakness along the d-file, but I think we can probably manage. Um, white's still a little better, yeah. Ultra positional play, like knight a5. Um, easier to play the position for white than for black. Black doesn't have a lot of active play. But here I got a little bit too passive with f6, queen d3. White just doing nothing well. And then rook c7, protecting my bishop f3 this is a hesitant move that looks more human than computer um, bishop c8 
rook d2, king h8, and white is slowly improving. And now he's built up a lot of pressure. So I'd love to play d5. The problem is he has knight a4 and swinging a knight into c5. And he ends up with outposts for his pieces. So again, if I do, if I do move a pawn, it should probably be the e-pawn. But I got a little bit frisky here, and I played f5. You know, thinking my opponent is really 1600, um, well, maybe if I open it up, you know, he'll start to make some tactical mistakes. But uh, this did not necessarily hold. e5 here apparently is possible. I did not see that little idea, e5, but I don't know why I couldn't take e5, d takes e. Like an ultra positional pawn sacrifice, a la Nimzovich. That's pretty impressive. Uh, too overt. So pawn takes f5, rook takes f5. And my pawn structure is still kind of fluid. So I don't have any terrible weaknesses. Uh, rook e1, rook f8. This was too passive, and I was in bad time pressure by this point. So at the end of the day, um, I lost control of d6. He got a bind on the position with knight to c5. And I did everything I could to defend the e6, but it's now turned into Nimzovician hell in this position. Absolute, complete positional domination for white. Knight g7, queen d4. The computer said like queen c3, but I don't really see a big difference between queen c3 and queen d4. I'm just getting owned here, and I was lucky to make it to like a... I was actually lucky to make it to a rook ending against this player. Um shall we call him. And uh, we get here into this rook ending where I may manage to trade off my bad bishop. And maybe there's a chance to draw here after king f7. He made a strange move very quickly. If he was using a computer for all his games, I, I think probably you'd see rook e3. I mean, for all his moves, you know. So kind of a human move here, rook e1. I feel like I'm playing like with a hybrid. Now rook b7 b3 and at this point I played rook b5 getting counterplay and a little bit down the line I missed my only chance king f2 best move rook a5 best move a4 rook c5 and then here I had to play d4 maybe black is lost in this position or rook c3 followed by d4 I guess it doesn't really matter they kind of transpose into one another but I made a terrible blunder here with g5, trying to do some kind of minority attack on the king's side. I was flagging, so this move d4 looks like there are drawing chances. Still drawing chances for black. After all, I went through here. I think I saw rook d2 and started to panic, but um, it's not that bad. White has king e1, rook c3, I think. Or even d3, I didn't see this. Maybe there's a real chance to hold on here. d3, c takes d3, rook c3. I'm only one pawn down. And one pawn down rook end games should offer some glimmer of hope. Though if my per opponent is perfect. Um, anyway, I think I finally blundered against this player. Yeah, g5, king e3. The king just marches in and my rook is like almost trapped. So I had to play d4. Now I'm just lost. The rook can't get out. Has no mobility. Perfect execution. Rook a6, king c5, rook b6, and rook e5, king f6. This is a mistake. I should play h6 here probably. But ultimately it wouldn't, wouldn't hold water. And now he should have played rook e8. But he played rook e2. White was also in some time pressure. It's just over. This killer king threatening rookie seven check. And that's it for today, guys. <laughs> We're out of business after h5 rook check takes pawn. And then probably the most suspicious move of the whole game is the last one. Where in this position where he has a5, king takes c6, any number of moves, he chooses Stockfish's number one move which isn't that obvious to me, rook c7. And rook c7, when you see a brutal, accurate move like that, that is uh, that is pretty killing. So I resigned here, or lost on time. 
But anyway, this was a, a number of very interesting Rosalimo Sicilians uh, featuring the variation with 3d6 that can be reached by the move order um, 2d6 and bishop b5 check as well. So it's useful as a defense for both players who play um, things like the Sveshnikov or also players who play things like the Dragon and the Nidorf. A multi-faceted defense to the Rosalimo, but life is not easy in the Rosalimo for black, and you need to, to do a lot of work theoretically. Thanks for joining me here for my review of Rosalimo games in my live stream on Twitch. I'm International Master William Pascal. This is Video Chess Training on YouTube. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you with a new video here every week. Bye-bye.